हेलो एंड वेलकम लेट्स टॉक अबाउट स्टेरॉइड्स सो दिस फर्स्ट टॉक अबाउट एडेनो कोटिको स्टेरॉइड्स इट इज रिलीज बाय एडेनो कोटिक्स एंड द टाइप्स ऑफ एडेनो कोटिक्स इंक्लूड्स जोना फासिकुलेटा व्हिच रिलीजेस ग्लूकोकोटिकोइड्स एंड जोना ग्लोमेरुलसा व्हिच रिलीजेस मिनरोकोटिकोइड्स एंड जोना रेटिकुलरिस व्हिच रिलीजेस एडेनल एंड्रोजन और सेक्स हार्मोन्स नाउ Glucocorticoids. These are the cortisol and other synthetic compounds. They have wide range of physiological activity, including intermediary metabolism, CVS function, growth, and immunity. The daily secretion in our body is about ten to twenty milligram, and the regulation of secretion is by ACTH, circadian rhythm, and peak in the early morning and after meal. Binding after secretion is that it binds with corticosteroid binding globulin. Now synthesis, cholesterol is converted into pregnenolone, which by mitochondrial pathway converts into aldosterone, which by glucocorticoid pathway converts into cortisol, and by androgen pathway to estradiol, testosterone, DHEA, and androestradiol. Now commonly used natural and synthetic glucocorticoids. These includes hydrocortisol or cortisol, cortisone, prednisolon, prednisone, methylprednisolon, miprednisolon. Which are the short and medium acting, and intermediate acting like triamcinolone, paramethazone, fluprednisolone, and long acting like betamethazone and dexamethazone. Now others include budesonide, biclomethazone, fluticon, uh, fluticasone, mometasone, flunisolide, and clobetasone propanate. Now most of the synthetic glucocorticoids are rapidly and completely absorbed from the GIT when given orally. This about a ninety percent bind to CBG in plasma, and five to ten percent are either free or binds to albumin. And the plasma half life is sixty to ninety hours. Now metabolism: cortisol is ninety nine percent metabolized before reaching liver. The twenty percent is converted to cortisol in kidney and other tissues with the mineral corticoid receptor by one alpha dehydroxy dehydrogenase. One percent is not metabolized, and in the liver, it is mostly reduced to Tetrahydrocortisol and tetrahydrocortisol, and so it reduces to cortisol and cortisol. Now, excretion. One third is excreted in the urine as dehydrocortisol metabolites, and most conjugated with glucuronic acid or sulfate and re-enter the liver and excreted by kidney. Now, synthetic glucocorticoids. The pharmacokinetics is almost same with few alterations. Alteration in molecule influences the affinity plasma protein binding capacity, side chain instability, rate of production, and metabolic products. And the serum half life is increased about fifty percent. Now, mechanism of action: glucocorticoids bind to CBG or corticosteroid binding globulin in blood and enters the cell in free form and binds to specific glucocorticoid receptor present in cytoplasm. This receptor belongs to the super family of the nuclear receptor. And this receptor is bound with two molecules of the heat shock protein and remain inactive. The receptor is composed of 800 amino acid and divided into three functional domain. Now, cortisol binds to glucocorticoid receptor and causes conformational change, and heat shock protein is dissociated from the cortisol receptor complex and become active and then transported to the nucleus and then binds to glucocorticoid's response element on the gene and regulates transcription. Now this is a picture showing the mechanism of action. Now pharmacological effects. Metabolic effects includes on carbohydrate metabolism, gluconeogenesis, glycogenolysis, reduced peripheral uptake of the glucose, increase reduced per uptake of the glucose in muscle cells, leading to increased blood glucose level and increase in the insulin secretion is seen. In protein metabolism, there is reduction in the muscle mass. Weakness and thinning of the skin, increased capillary fragility, atrophy of the lymphoid tissues, osteoporosis, and growth retardation in children is seen. Now, on fat metabolism, lipolysis may be seen, or inhibition of the lipolysis by insulin hormone insulin secretion, leading to increased fat deposition in the abnormal place and increased release of the fatty acids and glycerol in the circulation may be seen. In the case of brain gluconeogenesis. Release of the amino acid from muscle catabolism, reduced peripheral utilization of glucose, and stimulation of the lipolysis is seen. Now, permissive effects includes uh, 
the presence of the small amount of the cortisol must be needed to maintain some normal physiological function like response of the vascular and bronchial muscle to catecholamine, lipolytic response of the fat cell to catecholamine, ACTH and GH, and in hemopathic stem cells, there is increase in the neutrophil, reduced basophil, monocyte and eosinophil, reduced T and B lymphocytes, increased platelet and RBC. Anti-inflammatory effects. These dramatically decrease the manifestations of the inflammation. It inhibits all the events related to the concentration, distribution and function of the neutrophil. So, reduced concentration of the neutrophil at the site of the inflammation is seen. Reduced eosinophil, basophil and monocyte in circulation and reduced T and B lymphocytes. It also inhibits the function of the tissue macrophage and other antigen presenting cells. It inhibits the phospholipase A2 and reduces the synthesis of the prostaglandins, thromboxins, leukotrienes, PAF and thereby reduces the inflammatory response. It reduces the expression of the cyclooxygenase 2 enzyme and also reduces capillary permeability by reducing histamine release from basophil and muscle. It stabilizes lysosomal membrane and reduces the effects of the complement and reduces antibody production in large dose. Immunosuppressive effects on macrophage and other antigen presenting cells it reduces the response uh, to the antigen, reduces the ability, ability to phagocytosis, so reduce killing of the microorganism, reduce production of the tumor necrosis factor interleukin 1, interleukin 2, and gamma interferon, reduce T helper cells, and reduce antibody production. Atrophy of the lympho tissue, lympho lymph node spleen thymus, so reduced output of the T cells and antibody. As a result, there is reduced cellular immunity. On CNS, it causes depression and may increase intracranial pressure. On GIT, there is increased production of the acid and pepsin and reduced local immune response against S. pylori. On renal, there is maintenance of the renal function and reduced vasopressin secretion and excretion of the normal water load. On fat deposition, there is increased fat distribution. On calcium absorption, there is reduced calcium. On fetal lung maturation, cortisol stimulates the production of the pulmonary surfact active material known as surfactant required for the pulmonary ventilation of neonates. Suppression of the hypothalamic, pituitary, and adrenocortical axis may occur due to chronic use or acute adrenocortical insufficiency due to abrupt withdrawal. Now, clinical uses for adrenocortical insufficiency, adrenocortical hypo or hypofunction or allergic reactions in case of bones and joints. Respiratory tract, eye diseases, and collagen vascular disorder. The specific or relative diseases are shown here. In case of GIT diseases, thyroid diseases, renal disease, skin disease, hematological, neurologic, acute mountain sickness, etc. In case of organ transplant for long maturation of the fetus and for diagnostic purposes, steroids may be used. Now, adverse effect. It may lead to Cushing syndrome, which uh, presents as moon face, buffalo hump, puffiness, acne, hirsutism, insomnia, weight gain, pendulous abdomen, myopathy, muscle wasting, thinning of the skin, stray and bruising. Insomnia, hyperglycemia, peptic ulcer and acne may be seen. Osteoporosis, aseptic necrosis of the bone, delayed wound healing, acute psychosis, severe myopathy, depression, post subcapsular cataract, hypertension and acute pancreatitis may be seen. It may lead to increased intraocular pressure leading to glaucoma, hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis, benign intracranial hypertension, behavioral change and adrenal suppression more than two weeks of the use, and growth retardation and heart failure in the patient with heart disease may be seen. Now, contraindications. Peptic ulcer, hypertension, heart disease, diabetes mellitus, psychosis, glaucoma, osteoporosis, children, TB, varicella, and pregnancy. Now, steroid in pregnancy is contraindicated because it is teratogenic. The withdrawal of the steroid should be by tapering the dose if it is used more than two weeks. The long-term use of the steroid in children may lead to adult uh, like adversive, adult adverse effect as seen in adults and growth retardation. Increased severity of the common viral infection and increased cranial, intracranial pressure and live virus vaccination is unsafe in immunocompromised patient. Now, guideline or precaution during the chronic glucocorticoid therapy. Patient must always carry a card with written details of the therapy and patient must be aware of the importance of the compliance and monitoring of the blood glucose level and urinary sugar level for hyperglycemia. Waste must be, must be checked periodically for edema and regular checkup of the BP2 extrude hypertension should be done. 
Inquiry about the bony pain if needed and extract to include the osteoporosis and plasma potassium levels will be checked for hypokalemia. Periodic checking of any hidden illness and checkup of the signs and symptoms of the heart failure in patient disease if heart disease exists. And dose should be kept as low as possible and psychiatric checkup and periodic cell type examination should be done. End of the topic.